Hi, um, I'm Stephanie Farber, and this is In Touch with Branford. And um, today you're in for a treat because I have two men with me in the studio who are going to make this half hour, I think, roll by. Um, that's Jeff Beauty and um, Ray Loon, and they're both here with a group called Take a Vet Fishing with the First Congregational Church, a wonderful nonprofit here in Branford um, that I've been learning about and you're about to learn about. So I'm going to start it off by asking you, Jeff, to tell us a little about the history of it. How'd this start? Well, we, we had no plans whatsoever to start a Take a Vet Fishing program. And back in 2007, our church ran a program during Lent, and it was called Speaking of Faith. And one of the members of our congregation is a psychiatric nurse at the West Haven VA Hospital. And she talked about her job and how it works with her faith, and she does studies on post-traumatic stress and does brain studies on them and working with them. They're mostly returning Iraq and Afghanistan vets. And the stories she was telling us were just horrific. And afterwards, I, I just felt that there was got to be something more we can do. And initially, being the, the great adult that I am, I figured we could get our children involved and <laughs> you know, do cards and packages. And she said, let me get you in touch with the director of voluntary services. And the VA in bureaucracy is, mm -hmm. is unbelievable. <laughs> so trying to reach through to this person, it took over 30 phone calls to get to the right person. But you and persisted. I persisted, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, in the meantime, every night I would look at veterans' websites and different things. And I found a website, and I think it was soldiersandsailorsangels.org. And it uh, talked about a day called Take a Vet Fishing Day, where they proposed around Memorial Day weekend. Every year, you take a veteran out fishing, whether it's on a boat, a lake, a stream. And our church is fortunate and blessed enough to have a property on Short Beach Road called Killam's Point, which is 44 beautiful. acres. Yeah, a beautiful point in uh, Bramford. So I thought, well, I wonder if we could bring the vets there. So uh, after some research and talking, and um, so happened that I also talked with one of the uh, members of our church, and he made a, an announcement that, unbeknownst to me, he and his wife wanted to work with the vets, and they didn't know what to do. And I went up to him afterwards, and I said, I can't believe you said that. So <laughs> it, it got started. Got a hold of a gentleman by the name of Michael Rose, who's the director of recreation for the West Haven VA, and told him our plans and our thoughts and our hopes. And he said, Jeff, sounds like a great, great idea. I'll have to inspect the property. He said, we have to make sure it's, you know, ADA compliant, Americans with Disability. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, I know it is. We do camps there. Not a problem. He said, I still have to see. And I said, fine. We met him down there on a Thursday night and he came down and inspected and fell in love with the place. And he said, this is beautiful. He said, can we do our first group in about two weeks? <laughs> And I, I looked at Tim, and he said, yeah, I think we can do that. And so he said, okay, how about we do 14 for our first group? And now keep in mind, I'm still thinking Iraq and Afghanistan. I'm thinking young vets, mm -hmm. post-traumatic stress. And he says, we'll bring down 14 Korean War and World War II blind <laughs> veterans. Uh -huh. Catch the blind, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> and I, I just thought of the old adage, you know, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> right. I may have said holy, and it wasn't cow, but... It, they, they came down to the first event, and they, we still work with them. They are wonderful. The Blind Center is only one of ten in the entire country they have throughout the VA system, and they cover from Maine down to Virginia here, and they bring them into West Haven for training. And they come in for a six- to eight-week training program, initially when they lose their sight, and it doesn't have to be war-related. It can be diabetes, macular mm -hmm. degeneration, mm -hmm. age-related, um, an injury from work, as long as they served, they're entitled to this care. And they are just unbelievable. And they come back again for retraining with computers. And mm -hmm. we took our first group out, and that was when we knew we were onto something. Um, we received a letter. And Ray, would you talk about that letter we got? Well, you know, <clears throat> letters, uh, you know, people have a great experience. Um, the nice thing about letters is they really come from the heart. And, um, you know, when, when uh, um, when folks will tell you that uh, 
that they've had a great time and that it, it left a lasting impression on them. Um, it, it's hard to hard to resist here. I'm, I'm sorry, I misplaced the uh, the quote. Um, <clears throat> so this fellow um, he says you took a he took the group out of a parochial institution and into the freedom of a fishing event. For one of us who has never fished in his life to this point. Uh, and another who couldn't reel in his numerous catches, the wonderful taste of home-baked cookies, conversations, and laughter. For all of this and more, I thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, our eyes were, were opened, yeah. um, if that's not a you, cliche. Were you there on, the, on that uh, first oh, yeah. uh, event? Yeah. Um, and, you know, we were worried, uh, I think we were more worried about, uh, you know, big hooks flying in sinkers <laughs> and, you know, bluefish with teeth and how this was going to work out. But... Um, um, the, the fact that they didn't have all their sight um, or mm -hmm. some of their sight um, really didn't matter. It was really about connecting on a personal basis, um, enjoying the time together, making friends, um, uh, and then the fishing part of it, it just mm -hmm. it was beautiful. And they were among comrades. Um, that's one of the appeals um, of bringing vets together is that it, it really creates a, a comfort zone for them. And um, interestingly, <clears throat> most of us involved in this uh, undertaking are not veterans. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Um, yeah. And um, you know, every once in a while we look at each other like, gee, how did this work out? Yeah. But you know, it really, for us, it's about uh, showing gratitude for their service. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they wrote a blank check when they signed up um, f uh, to yeah. serve the country, and uh, you know, the least we can do is repay in a small way. And um, we're, we never cease to be amazed um, at the end of a a day out on, on the water, um, what were the stories that we share with each other and, and the laughs that we've had and, um, you know, what we see, the courage that uh, these folks have, uh, different disabilities. Um, mm -hmm. um, you're probably seeing some pictures uh, on your screen now or behind us here. Um, the disabilities really span uh, quite a range. Right. I, I don't think you can, the folks in the audience can see, but right in back of Ray, there's a, a photo at Killam's Point where um, a group of veterans in, and one I see in a wheel, wheelchair with mm -hmm. a bag attached of some sort, um, and others with obvious disabilities uh, fishing. <laughs> and a lot of folks, uh, volunteers it looks like, uh, men and women, they're helping them. So they, are they your volunteers now from the church or from the community or variety? Well, it's funny because we were talking about that. One of the great things about the program is how, how it spread. Mm -hmm. um, it started with just the blind center. Now we work with six, six different units within the hospital. We also work with the Newington VA and the Rocky Hill VA. And the groups that have come out, it's mm -hmm. not just our church, it's spread so far beyond that. The fire department, the explorers, which are the young folks, students oh, that yes. work with the fire department, <clears throat> they come out and they are workhorses. They come early and they leave late and they mm -hmm. do whatever is needed. We have an organization called CARE, um, which are fishing instructors from the state of Connecticut. We didn't even know they existed and they come from Stanford and Coventry, come down to help us with the vets. And it, it's just amazing. Trout Unlimited sends people to work with us. <laughs> That's a great name. <laughs> yeah. National organization, and there's a chapter here, the Hammonasset mm -hmm. chapter, and they come and help us, and it has just spread, you know, far and wide. So and how, do, how did these people hear about you? We've been in uh, the New Haven Register. We had a story on Fox News and mm -hmm. uh, through church, word of mouth. Um, mm -hmm. It's just remarkable how it's spread. Mm -hmm. But the, through the VA, one of the amazing things, the different groups that we work with, we started with the, the blind, mm -hmm. and... Um, it spread, and we now work with Beyond the Blind. We've, we now work with a lot of the PTSD groups, which, uh -huh. you So know, that's was, what you thought finally, you were yeah. <laughs> you And now they're, now they're with uh -huh. us. Uh -huh. um, we work with homeless vets. Mm -hmm. We work with some that are suffering from different dependencies. Mm -hmm. And it, it's open to anyone, and it, no requirements for religious denomination. It's there for everyone. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and do people come repeatedly, or do they, it's a one-shot deal, or how does that work? They, uh, they would love to come back uh, <laughs> repeatedly. Uh, and, and the ones that are uh, based locally, mm -hmm. uh, we'll, are, we'll see them uh, repeatedly. Mm -hmm. um, they really take great joy in, in coming back, and, and we've developed some, some, some great friendships there. And it's wonderful to see them um, year after year. Um, you know, you can tell a difference. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, they're making progress for all kinds of reasons, because, you know, the, the programs they're involved in, and. Um, 
but invariably, you know, there's a big smile on their face when they come walking down the path uh, for another day of fishing. Mm -hmm. um, and now they're they're picking up and helping, um, you know, new folks out and, and are, are involved as well. Um, but uh, it's just a great chance to get out of out of their everyday um, the environment, big. yeah, <laughs> right, and relax. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, yeah, is how the program is spread. It's just we started and it was just fishing, and three years ago, um, we're in our fifth year now. Three years ago, one of the gentlemen with us, our Ed, who uh, avid fisherman, to say that is to an understatement, but he decided he wanted in the winter put together a fly tying program. Mm -hmm. And he says, but Jeff, we probably... We need... might have to explain that to some people in the audience who and are fly avid tying, fishermen. If you're a, a fly fisherman, um, most fish come to the surface and they'll go after flies, mm -hmm. all different types. And some flies, there's wet flies, there's dry flies. And it's a very intricate process, and I don't do it. Mm -hmm. And it involves a very small hook, and you, you're actually creating something that looks like a, a fly mm -hmm. for that. And there's a picture on the screen of, of uh, your guys doing that. Yes. Right? And initially, Ed said, Jeff, we probably want to do this with sighted vets. Mm -hmm. We don't want to frustrate, you know, visually impaired people. And I said, you know, you're probably right. So I called up the director of recreation, discussed our thoughts. And he said, Jeff, that's a great idea. He said, and I, I tend to agree with you. Let me see what I can do. And true to form, <laughs> yes. the, uh, the blind center was the, were the first takers. Uh, uh -huh. And yeah. again, we Only thought, takers, yeah. thought, here we are now with, uh, with hooks and, and with little feathers and strings and threads and, and things like that. And uh, how is this all going to work? And uh, mm -hmm. again, we were the ones that uh, got the education. And, uh, and because all, you can again and see all, it on the screen, of, yeah, you know, no, that, obviously that a man who's impaired Scott, uh, with his Scott, sight. Yeah, he was... Uh, he, he did a wonderful day. Now he has virtually no sight at all, and um, and he made, uh, as I remember, four different mm -hmm. um, patterns. Uh, and um, you know, he was one of those guys. Uh, he was a medic um, in uh, in Iraq, and um, and he was the guy that took care of everybody else yeah. in the unit. Mm -hmm. um, and even with sightless, he was out helping the other guys. Mm -hmm. He would give uh, give them tips and coach them and um, and remind them. And uh, yeah, it was it's just great to see. Um, well, you know, so again, it, it's overcoming yeah. uh, uh, something maybe that um, either we perceived as limitation or often they did, like um, whether it's fishing or fly tying, we hear a lot that I didn't think I could do this again, or I haven't done this in ages, or I remember when I did it as a kid, mm -hmm. and um, it brings people back um, just as much as somebody that's never done it before that suddenly discovers, well, you know, this is, uh, this is fun. And, and if, even if I didn't catch something, you know, wow, we had a yeah. nice chat um, or we had some fun together or, you know, really enjoyed the, the apple pie that somebody <laughs> chose to bake that day. You right, know? right. Well, uh, it strikes me, too, that you're, they're, they're performing a task that's unrelated to being a vet or, mm -hmm. you know, being serving in the military or having had terrible experiences, perhaps. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just, you know, a whole new skill level. and uh, But some way to... Um, interact with other people, with you, with their friends, the other vets. Well, that's uh, some of the things that the, the VA instructors have told us. Mm -hmm. Some of the, the wonderful things about our program, and it, it's just serendipitous because we didn't realize that, you know, that it was going to happen this way. Um, during the fly time, the first time we did it, one of the instructors said to me, Jeff, this is the best program you've ever run. I looked at him and I said, we've caught fish. That, <laughs> how could this be the best? He says, you know why this is so good? He says, number one, it's educational. It's teaching yes. them something. Number two is it's something that's difficult even for a sighted person to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it successfully. It's something that's we have thought And taking yeah. something home with them. Uh, as right. A it's a, right. Jeff, remember the guy that, uh, that did such a good job with the flies? And then a I year later, that. we ended up uh, helping out a group of blind vets up on Cape Cod, the, the Cape Cod Blind Veterans Association actually asked us to help them start wow. um, uh -huh. a fishing event there. Mm -hmm. Well, little do we know, we show up there, and here's one of our alumni who still had his fly collection. He says, I want to use these. I want to catch fish uh -huh. with this. Uh -huh. And uh, Ed was out there in a, in a howling headwind uh, <laughs> casting for an hour. And I, th I think that actually touched the water a few times, right? Uh, but uh, they didn't catch anything. But he, it was just Not wonderful to see that, that, yeah. that follow through. And, and he didn't forget. Uh -huh. you know? So you must have wonderful um, stories and experiences. What are oh, some yeah. of the outstanding ones that you can um, You know what? The, the first year we did it, our first female vet 
was actually a nurse who served with Douglas MacArthur in World War II. Oh, so Mildred? Mildred. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? It, for the kids, it's like a living history lesson. Um, one of the gentlemen, um, I think Ray mentioned before, was a prisoner of war in Vietnam. And he escaped, and you know, the stories about how he escaped, it, it's, the things that they did, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So they've so. shared.